it's a huge question to say, what should I write? And I, I, I do my best to answer that in the easiest way for new writers in my book. Um, and and I, I try to break that down the best I can, but I mean, it's, it's a really big question. Uh, and the thing I, I certainly don't want to see any screenwriters uh, run into is just feeling like they have to blindly guess. I, I try to answer that in the book, but if you don't have access to the book, um, the best advice I could give to a screenwriter is what that story is, and, and you know, it's not that cliche, write what you know, because I've never written what I quote unquote know. I, I write fantastical worlds and, 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 uh, and, and uh, supernatural s stories and all of that. But write what you feel and write what's in your heart and write something that means something to you. You can go to a Redbox machine. It used to be Blockbuster, but those all turned into cell phone stores. Um, you can go to Redbox, Redbox machine. Look at the independent films on there. So independent would be the, the family titles at the bottom. Look for the live action ones, usually with a dog or an animal on them. Um, and then also look at the big studio films that are kind of, you know, throughout the machine you'll see them in different spots. Whatever a big studio film is, look to the ones that are like right next to that. Or get on Netflix and find a big studio movie in, in the lineup and then look at the independent movie you've never heard of that's next to it. That's the independent Hollywood zone. That's where I work. Those are the scripts that we're in need of. That's, that's where I think you're going to get your best indicator as to the genres that work, the genre themes you're going to see. Uh, the number of cast members, the, all that information. I was a script reader for, God, probably a decade, and I, and, uh, the, and, and I was reading seven, eight scripts a week. Uh, and th the rare one was the great script. And when you found that, that was a very exciting day at the office. And sometimes the really terrible scripts were kind of, they were fun because they were so god-awful. But the ones that, that got really exhausting and really enervating is a script reader who's sitting there and has to read a script, synopsize it, write a comment about it, then pick up another one and read it, and so on, were the ones that you could tell were written by people who were looking at what last year's hit was and trying to imitate it. And uh, those were deadly, and they were, they weren't good, they weren't bad, they were safe and mediocre. And any writer, any young writer, any old writer, anyone who's just starting to write anything, write something that you feel, write, 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 write something that comes from the heart. I think screenwriters stand their best chance of really getting noticed uh, by knowing what the business needs. So it's not coming in talking about how passionate you are about the script. It's talking and speaking in a way that answers to the needs of the production company, the producer, the studio, etc. Um, it's there are tried and tested genres that are just they they just nail what the business lives on. And if you if if a young writer wants to come into the business and really just get their emails answered, get their phone calls returned. It's being able to speak about their project and have it answer to those things. It's, it's going to be saying, I'm writing a, a family film about this. I'm writing a film about this. And it's a very quick point. It's not, uh, it's, you know, never coming of age stories. It's never dramas. It's, it's happier films. It's, it's the kinds of films you see on a red box machine. That's what Hollywood needs to stay in business. And so if you're coming to the table bringing uh, opportunities for Hollywood to continue staying in business, they're going to pay attention to you. When I decided I was going to be a writer again and decided I was going to do it with Michael, in my mind I said to myself, I oh, sounds so awful maybe, but I'm going to write a classic. Oh. I'm not just going to write another movie. We are going to create a classic. And who knows what that means. And again, it sounds obnoxious maybe, but um, uh, we knew probably, I don't know, 20 some pages in that just something was happening. And we weren't thinking about demographics. We weren't thinking about who the audience was going to be. We weren't thinking about any, any quote unquote commercial 
uh, uh, um, aspects of it, we were thinking what's good, what's funny, what's making us laugh, what's moving the story forward, what are the zaniest, craziest ideas we can have. And it just, it, and, and it, it happens with, with, with scripts and, and it happens in your writing. There's just times that you feel that you're in a zone and you're in a place that you're so connecting with yourself and you're so connecting with what your vision is that if you can get it on a page, other people are going to see it and feel it too. And never at any point am I saying, don't write dramas, don't write uh, uh, comedies, don't write the coming of age story. If you have a fantastic idea for a movie, I think a writer should hold on to just hold on to it. Wait, like, get the commercial scripts out first get a reputation of being a screenwriter who can deliver what the system needs, who can write quickly, who can write well, who can write within budget, uh, and get a couple of actual paid gigs, and you'll get them. Uh, if you go in the opposite way saying, I know what Hollywood wants, they want this, they want these very uh, deep dramas, coming of age dramas, um, and forcing them to do that, uh, it's not, you're not going to get noticed. But if you come and giving them what they want, which are like tween girl family films, or uh, Christmas movies with dogs, um, women in peril thrillers, these kinds of things. Uh, Hollywood pays attention to you and once you are writing those and once you're getting noticed for that work, then you have a collection of contacts and you can say, I have an interesting idea, could this work? And then you can present those. People may not think that Beetlejuice is a personal movie, it's an intensely personal movie. It was intensely personal for Michael and me. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I didn't know I had a theme until I had enough work to realize I had a theme. And almost everything I've written are about broken families who are put back together in some bizarre way. But, there, but, but because I came from a broken family. And, 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 uh, what, and, and, and so, so the, there's a, I, I like to think that my work has a sense of heart and a sense of compassion and a sense of humanity in it, no matter how bizarre it is, no matter how weird the worlds get. Uh, uh, and and you, you, got, you got to write something that you feel and something that, that you have some passion for. Or just why do it? It's too hard. It's just, it's, it, 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 it's not an easy job. I would take the high school script over the foreign exchange one hands down. Mm -hmm. But I would take it and we would probably rebrand that and make it junior high and make it more focused on a tween girl audience knowing that 9 to 12 year old girls are the most likely audience to be renting movies and buying movies on something like iTunes, Amazon or other platforms. Uh, and I, I would see bigger numbers doing that. And I'd make a really nice pink poster. See, this is how we're talking. It's you come in with an idea and then we target an audience we know we need to hit. Uh, and then we, we create a concept around that and I can already see the key art in my head and I would go talk to my teams about doing that. I know how much money we can make internationally with a movie like that and we would go then have either take that writer and have them rewrite it or we go hire a writer we've had experience with to write the movie we now just created in two minutes. I personally can't imagine saying, well, this was a hit now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write my version of that. I don't really, it's not really what I care about, what I feel, but I can imitate it well enough. I, I can't imagine spending a year of your life doing that, but people do it all the time. And they usually write mediocre scripts. Is being safe something that's never appealed to you? I, 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 I don't know how. In, 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 in my career and in my life. <laughs> safe, safe hasn't factored into it. And, uh, and, and uh, not, not, always, not always the best decisions, uh, maybe, but I'm just, I, I sort of like jumping off cliffs. Look, comedies are fantastic. Uh, and, and you would be correct, anyone would be correct if they said comedies are very high grossing popular movies. They absolutely are. Um, the problem is the best way for a new writer to really break into Hollywood and build a career is to go towards the independent space, not the big studios. There's too much noise at the big studio level, there's way too many barriers. So go to indie Hollywood, that's where I work, uh, and that's where really most of the movies and content, that's where it comes from. So on the comedies front, 
indie Hollywood is not just thinking US and Canada. We're not thinking our domestic English speaking markets. We're thinking global. We get a lot of our money from overseas. And the problem with most newbie writers is they want to write something like American Pie, a really raunchy comedy, or they want to write a very smart comedy uh, with, with you know, high level humor and, and you know, witty dialogue. Witty dialogue costs a lot of money to dub. Social nuances in Russia or India or Japan are not what they are here. Not every country in the world celebrates Thanksgiving and understands what the Super Bowl means. Um, there, are, there are so many subtleties to the international marketplace that even if you nail your comedy script and make it wide enough for an English-speaking audience to understand, that's a very limited part of the world. And the way a Hollywood executive or the way a producer will read that is, that's a very limited uh, cross-section of money and I'm missing out on a lot of other revenue that can come in. So, Comedies are great. Just keep them in your back pocket. When things are going well in my writing, and I, th I think it's true for all writers, that if, if you're like intensely self-conscious about who is your audience, who, who is it, you know, uh, is this for the 12 to 16 year old? If you're doing that, you're not writing well. And you get in a zone and your story starts telling you. You're not telling the story it's emerging from some place within you. And that's what Beetlejuice was. And I just always had to, and I used to say to Michael sometimes, because I could feel it going well, and I'd say, Michael, you know we're gonna have a toy line. And he'd go, shut up, shut up. <laughs> just let's just finish the script, you know. <laughs> right. But I, I mean, it's, it's a very hard thing to explain what that, what that, what that it, 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 it's, a, it's an epiphany after an epiphany. And that you feel like you're just, on to something bigger than you. Out of all the spec scripts in Hollywood, the reason it's not made to fruition is just people writing the wrong thing. So it's, it, it, there's so many, my view is this, it's like there's this stereotype in Hollywood that there's, there's every, every other waiter you meet is like has a screenplay on the side, every real estate agent's writing something on the side, and in truth, like that, that's reality. Uh, a lot of people come here with big Hollywood dreams and want to write that great screenplay. And People just kind of go, oh, well, you know, they're not talented, they're writing bad scripts. Certainly there's a lot of bad scripts, but at the same time, there's a lot of very talented people who just aren't writing the right things. So they're, they're not writing the right things, they're not writing what Hollywood needs, and they're not presenting their work in the way that it needs to be presented to get doors to open. So if they just shift a few of those elements, if they write what Hollywood needs, which are goldmine genres, as we outline in the book, if they, if they present their ideas in a way Hollywood needs to hear them, which is about pitching your story in a way that is, this is how my script helps your company, this is how my script uh, answers that, that need in the Hollywood system, uh, and then if you just kind of get yourself out there at the same time, like that's how you really do it. It's building, it's not, it's not selling a one-off script, it's building a career.